All right, so welcome everyone to Principles of Chemistry 2 Lab Online Edition. Uh, myself and Professor Collins uh, wanted to first give you an update on how each of us are doing before we just dive right into the material. Uh, Professor Mark Collins and myself uh, teach other a few times a week for, for doggy playtime uh, and to you know chat about how we're going to continue to transition the course uh, online to Moodle. So this is on uh, Professor Collins's end. Uh, he is busy taking care of two little ones, uh, one, one uh, dog and uh, his son, Nate. Um, so he is keeping up with that on a daily basis. As for myself, uh, I am fully consumed by the latest memes going around at this time. I spend way too much time on Twitter every day in between you know, trying to develop this course. Uh, I also decided to buy some white claw for the first time because why not? Um, I bought four cans and hopefully that lasts me through the end of this whole thing. Uh, and then finally, I also have a little one that I am taking care of uh, in, uh, in my dog named Beaker, uh, who is currently sleeping uh, on that same chair as I record this. Um, so that's pretty much how, how we're doing. We hope all of you are doing uh, just fine and, and are adapting to the new educational environment as well. And uh, before we jump into the material, we also wanted to make sure that you continue to receive uh, a good education in the greatest artists of all time. Uh, so we wanted to keep the Tunes at Noon series going. Uh, we didn't think it would be ideal to actually record this while there was music in the background. Uh, so instead, we hosted a Spotify playlist uh, for the Rolling Stones, who is the band of the week on Moodle for you to listen to at any point uh, over, over the next week. All right, so with that, we'll jump into our first lab, thin layer chromatography of analgesics, which are drugs used to treat pain. Uh, we refer to thin layer chromatography as TLC. So what is TLC? Maybe you have probably done this already in organic lab. Uh, we used to do it in organic one lab and organic two lab. So if you've taken that course, you've at least seen it before. You'll go into a little bit more detail uh, with it in this course. Uh, so TLC is just a technique that's used to separate mixtures. Uh, it's again, really, really useful for organic chemists uh, who are running reactions. Let's say they're, they have two different starting materials that are reacting to form a product. Uh, how do they actually know when the reaction is finished? Uh, because they can't always just base it off of time. Uh, what they do is a reaction check by taking some of the solution in their reaction flask and doing a TLC. And uh, if they notice the disappearance of all their starting materials and the appearance of their product, that's how they know that they are finished. So, so TLC is primarily used by organic chemists uh, so that they can know when their reaction is finished. Uh, and there's two main components to, to TLC. Uh, there's what you actually put your reaction sample on, uh, the stationary phase. So the stationary phase for TLC is commonly an aluminum plate that's coated with silica gel. I'll talk a little bit more about the structure of silica gel in a few slides, um, but that's uh, one part of TLC. And the other is what solvent you actually use uh, to carry the compounds up the TLC plate. We refer to that as the mobile phase. And interestingly, it's not always just one solvent. Um, it, it can actually be a combination of solvents. So uh, in today's lab, uh, we have hexanes, we have acetone, and we have a combination of hexanes and acetone. And really, that's all about just trying to fine tune the polarity of the mobile phase that you're running your TLC plate in. And then finally, once your TLC plate is finished, uh, you have to actually be able to see the compounds on the TLC plate, uh, because unfortunately, not everything you know, is red or blue. Uh, pretty much every organic compound that, that uh, chemists work with uh, is colorless. So you can't actually see it uh, on the TLC plate. So what we do is we shine UV light on it and we'll see what that looks like in a few slides. All right, so what's the main idea behind developing a TLC plate? Uh, looking at the uh, blank TLC plate on the left, what you do is you draw a baseline with pencil very carefully at the bottom. And then in the center of that baseline, you actually deposit your sample. And so today we're working with um, an unknown you know, solution 
three, and that's essentially what you would deposit on the center of the TLC plate. And what you do is you place the TLC plate into some sort of container, very commonly a beaker with a watch glass, you know, over the top of it, and then some solvent at the bottom. And uh, once you place the TLC plate in that beaker of solvent, the solvent actually carries the compounds up the TLC plate. You can see them moving here. Um, and then at some point, the solvent will reach really close to the top of the TLC plate, and that's when you pull it out of the beaker. Uh, and so what you would do is you would mark how far the, the solvent ran up the TLC plate, again with pencil, and then shine UV light on it. And ideally, you'd see something that looks like this, where you have two spots uh, now instead of one, and those two spots have separated. And then really importantly, uh, the reason that one compound travels further up the TLC plate has to do with the fact that that compound is most likely less polar relative to the other. So this is a great example uh, where we had three compounds that move different distances up a TLC plate based on their polarities. So let's take the compound on the right, uh, ethylbenzene. That is a compound that only contains carbon and hydrogen atoms, so very nonpolar compound, compound C here. And uh, it moved furthest up the TLC plate. Uh, the compound in the middle, compound B, that traveled you know, a decent amount up the TLC plate, uh, that is benzaldehyde. It also contains carbon and hydrogen atoms, but it also contains this carbon-oxygen double bond, so a little bit more polar relative to ethylbenzene. And then finally, compound A barely moved up the TLC plate at all, and that compound was benzyl alcohol, which contains this OH group. And so if you look at the structures and the, and the sketches here, you see that compounds that have hydroxy groups interact very strongly with the stationary phase, the silica gel. That's because the silica gel is just a bunch of silicon oxygen bonds that are repeating, but also coming off the silicon atoms are hydroxy groups that really want to hydrogen bond and interact with molecules that can hydrogen bond. Uh, so they essentially trap the benzyl alcohol and prevent it from moving uh, up the TLC plate. Whereas the ethylbenzene molecule, that really can't interact with the OHs of the silica gel, and that just happily travels up the TLC plate um, with the solvent carrying it up. So that's the main takeaway. Nonpolar compounds, um, compounds that primarily contain carbon and hydrogen atoms, those travel pretty far up a TLC plate, uh, whereas compounds that can hydrogen bond stay very close to the bottom of the TLC plate. And so what would an actual TLC plate look like uh, after you uh, removed it from the solvent chamber and illuminated it with UV light? Uh, it would look something like this. Again, we have our ethyl benzene here. That spot moved pretty far up the TLC plate. The benzaldehyde moved a decent amount, and then the benzyl alcohol hardly moved off the baseline. Again, uh, that's because the benzyl alcohol can hydrogen bond, interact with the silica gel on the TLC plate, whereas the ethyl benzene uh, cannot. And then we notice in the middle here uh, with the benzaldehyde lane, we call each of these lanes when we have multiple compounds on the same TLC plate. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, residual compound down here. That's probably just due to streaking. Uh, if you add way too much uh, of one compound to a TLC plate, um, you know, there's only so much that can actually move up the TLC plate, uh, whereas the rest just sort of gets left behind. So ideally what you would do is, is further dilute this sample so that you wouldn't see that streaking there. But anyway, we could be a little bit more scientific uh, about you know, how far these compounds travel up the TLC plate. Um, and the way we do that is with RF values. And RF values are really just a percentage uh, without multiplying by 100%. It's how far up the TLC plate did the compound. And there's a formula for it. It's just the distance traveled by the compound or analyte uh, divided by the distance traveled by the salt. First, to figure out the distance traveled by the solvent, you, you would take a ruler and using the millimeter side, you would start at the baseline and measure you know, the distance between the baseline and how far the solvent traveled before you removed it from the TLC plate. In this case, it was 20 millimeters. And then you would go back to the baseline and measure the distance from the baseline to the center of each of these spots. So that would be the distance traveled by each analyte. 
Um, so for analyte C, starting from the baseline and, and measuring up to the center of that spot there, that would be 11 millimeters. Uh, from the baseline to B would be five millimeters, and then from the baseline to A would be you know, essentially half a millimeter. And so what you would do is you take each of these and divide them by 20 millimeters, and you'd get the RF values on the right. So it's just a little bit more scientific way of describing uh, how far each compound traveled up the TLC. Okay, so that's really all the theory you need to know um, prior to examining the data uh, that was gathered for you for today's lab. So a few goals uh, for the lab. We want to determine the compounds that are present in the unknown solution number three sample. Uh, we're not gonna tell you how many there are. You're gonna have to analyze the, the data provided to you. And then once you figure out how many compounds are in the sample, you have to figure out what the compounds themselves are. Uh, so that's really a combination of parts one and two. And then finally, we ask you to determine what the over-the-counter drug those compounds actually make up. You know, is it Tylenol, Tylenol PM, um, Excedrin, so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, first for part one, what you should do is watch the TLC video playlist on Moodle first uh, to, to see essentially what you would be doing in lab if you were present there. Uh, and then what you should do is analyze the, the five TLC plates, the data that we provided to you on the handout. Uh, determine the volume ratios uh, that um, were prepped in the solvent chambers, calculate RF values just like we did, just like we saw in the previous slides, and figure out what the optimal solvent ratio is that best separates the compounds. So that's all built into uh, the part one um, Moodle quiz or the handout um, Moodle quiz along with the, the post lab quiz. Uh, and then part two, again, watch the, the TLC videos on Moodle first, uh, and then determine what each of the compounds are by you know, trying to figure out you know, how far up each of the known compounds traveled up the TLC plate uh, relative to your unknown solution, uh, and then try to figure out what the unknown over-the-counter drug is. And so these are the options that we give you. There's Tylenol PM, there's Excedrin PM, and there's Excedrin Extra Strength. They all contain different numbers of compounds and different types of compounds. And so, you know, once you can verify what the compounds are uh, in your unknown, you can then sort of match it up with one of these three. And really what you should do is, is look up each of those structures uh, for the post-lab quiz, uh, just so that you get a good sense of, you know, exactly what they look like. And most importantly, what the differences are in their polarities. So uh, again, just as a recap, make sure you watch the, the videos on Moodle, uh, both, the, the, both of the YouTube uh, video playlists, uh, walk through the handout, and you, know, you might go back and forth between the handout, the, the YouTube videos, so on and so forth. And uh, what we're actually grading is the TLC handout quiz that's on Moodle and the TLC post lab quiz as well. And then we will give you 10 points uh, just for watching this video. All right, so that's all we got for this week. Uh, we will see you next week.